Chet of Heavens here today for a collab with Lucas Pfaff. He's the one who sent me all the info for today's video, so check out his channel. He's laying low for a little bit, but the man's a genius. Thank you, Lucas. Today we're making a plus 0.33, so low powered, 77 mil achromatic diopter for roughly 20 bucks. If you're not on the diopter wagon yet, check the link in the description for the chapter in which I talk about them. Diopters, or close-up filters, are auxiliary lenses that change how infinity works on full lenses. They are incredibly useful for anamorphic shooting, especially when it comes to close focusing, since most scopes struggle with that. Diopters are great, but most of them, the cheap ones, are made of a single glass element. This leads to good center performance and quickly decaying image quality as we move towards the edges. To address this issue, optical designers came up with achromatic diopters. These are made of two glass elements, one correcting the other's imperfections, leading to much better overall performance, especially around the edges. Low power diopters are rare by default and they're the most useful for us since we're not trying to shoot macro here. We're just trying to make a better looking medium close-up shot. The math behind diopters is a bit too thick to tackle on this very episode, so I really recommend you read that article in the description. Summarizing this, achromats are awesome and low power uh, for diopters is great. To give you some reference, one of the most famous diopters in the anamorphic world is the 72mm Tokina Plus 0.4 Acromat. It sells for $250 on average, with peaks of $400. SLR Magic offers 77mm Acromats in plus 0.33 and plus 1.33 for $150 each. Rapido just started offering their own diopter, which is an 86 mil plus 0.5, and it costs $280. So it might be shocking to say we are making a 77 mil plus 0.33 Acromat for $20. Let's do this. The first ingredient, and the one that's gonna take the longest, is the glass. Uh, to make that, go to the beach, and collect 200 grams of white sand. Wait, what? No, no, not that tutorial. Uh, go on AliExpress, the link for the specific listing is in the description, and ask the seller to buy one, or however many you desire, units of the item code 116. They'll reply with a link to a different listing just for your order. So you pay and wait. Mine took exactly 30 days to arrive. In the meantime, you can get started on the other ingredients. Get 77 and 82 mil UV filters and knock out the, the glass. Then 3D print the file linked in the description. Once the glass arrives, take a moment admiring it. Think that people want to sell you the same thing for 100 or more bucks and you just paid $20. Notice the, diff the division between the glass elements on the side. This is a thick piece of glass, eh? <laughs> Use a Sharpie or a permanent marker or model paint to black out the edges of the glass. This will improve light transmission and mainly contrast. It turns out this was a much more challenging build than expected. A key part of it is making sure you have a good 3D print. Mine wasn't, so I had to hack, sand, and cut pieces away until everything fits. So just start making sure that your print is good. Also, the tolerances from the glass manufacturer were a little too loose, and mine, my glass had a little bit of a ledge compared to Lucas's glass that required me to sand some more of the print. Once you have the print, start by attaching the 82mm UV to the top, then you slide in the glass and mine was super super tight even with all the sanding so that required me to heat up the print to make it expand and I still had to push it super hard more than I was comfortable with and I didn't film the whole process but it led to lots and lots of fingerprints and grease on the glass that I had to wipe out later. Uh, lastly close it up with the 77 mil blank and I had to go through three different NDs because slim filters won't work. 
They just won't reach the threads. You need taller 77 mil threads on the uh, filter. You can just order filters that are regular size and not slim, or you just go to your local camera store and pick a filter that works. That's what I did, and it was much cheaper than buying stuff on Amazon. All you need is the ring after all. So you get filter threads on the top and you can mount another thing to it, like filters. There you go, project complete. If you look at the coatings of this thing, you'll see there's strong blue, which leads to eliminating a bit much of the blue light waves from the final picture. This means you'll get a warmer image when using this filter. This is much thicker than a single element diopter, but quite similar to SLR Magic's diopters. Even in the coatings, take that as you want. Lastly, here's a comparison image using our cheap Acromat and a very fancy $300 plus 0.5 from Iskorama. At 300% zoom, we can maybe see that the Iskorama is a tad sharper. The blue on the coatings manifests itself strongly on the flares, which wash out the image a bit too much. If you like sci-fi blue, you'll like this Acromat way better than cleaner coatings. Here is the Siri lens with the Iskorama Acromat, which is more neutral. And here it is with our DIY Acromat. Way more blue flares, right? Once again, big thanks to Lucas Pfaff for sharing all this info and providing the 3D model for printing. There's nothing quite like saving money and learning something in the process. In my experience, I usually pay to learn. Anyway, uh, this is it for this week. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I realized I'm going through subjects much faster than expected, so I'm open to suggestions for new videos. Hopefully, we can also uh, live chat sometime soon. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which subject would you like for me to present live? And don't say anamorphic shooting. Be specific, please. See you next week. Chitra out.